Okay, so um, I'm Xi Jin Shen and I'm a postdoc here. Uh, today I want to like to talk about some of our results of uh, looking at the circumgalactic medium in uh, different type of galaxies in our swimming simulations. Uh, so from the whole morning session until now, the last talk, uh, I guess it's um, uh, it's obvious that observations already have quite a bit of uh, data piling up. Uh, in terms of how the CGM and the metals, especially around the CGM, are looks look like. Uh, this is, for example, the high redshift uh, Lambri galaxies, the different ion distributions as a function of distance. Uh, the same thing with oxygen six, a low redshift for star forming and non star forming galaxies. And Chris has been talking about magnesium two. Uh, it's a remarkable correlation that when you scale with the view radius, it's actually keep the same shape uh, of distribution and. Also, uh, not, not just the spatial distribution, but also a detailed spectrum uh, like this one is available to look at a lot of information. For example, uh, you have here, you have a spectrum of kinematically correlated uh, metal absorbers of both high ions and low ions. So it means those gas absorbers are actually quite multi-phase and have a very complex structure. And not just metals, of course, uh, X this morning is talking about uh, amount of neutral hydrogen, uh, the lambda limit system covering fraction along the quasar uh, hosting galaxies uh, with a very huge covering fraction here, as we see. Um, so all these observations are there, and then uh, I would argue that it plays a very strong constraint of how um, galaxy formation model should do, and play a very strong constraint of how uh, feedback work, and, and the connection between galaxy and the halo gas, how gas gets into the, accrete into the galaxy, and how gas feedback eject the gas out. And feedback and accretion, obviously, are the key component of regulating the star formation in, in galaxies and making the galaxy in, the, in, in simulations look like what we observe today. So, what I want to do here is to pick uh, two of our very high resolution zooming simulations uh, with outflows and cosmological uh, back conditions. Uh, one is um, Milky Way mice scale and one is the very small dwarf scale and to see what is the CGM looks like and compare to, uh, to the observation data. So um, the massive galaxy here I use uh, is called Eris 2. I was using the same initial condition as Eris. Um, Javier was talking about on, on Tuesday. And uh, I don't have much time to talk in detail about what is into the simulation and what's the parameter choice. Um, but the resolution is 100 parsec uh, also. And this high resolution allow us to, first of all, um, to resolve the disk structure, to start to resolve the disk structure even to the gentle molecular scale. And second, to actually have more detailed structure about the CGM and we can compare more information uh, provided by the observers. So uh, just a quick mention here what the disk looks, not, not disk, what the galaxy looks like by itself. And this is the stellar mass halo mass uh, as a function of redshift. So this black dot here is Eris 2. As we can see that it's not just, well, the galaxy is not evolved to redshift 0 yet to redshift 0.5 right now. It's not just um, at redshift close to 0 that has the right, uh, right amount of stars consistent with the abundance matching technique and also at high redshift. And this is the uh, rotation curve at redshift 0.5 or so. And we can see that it's already comparable to the Milky Way rotation data at redshift 0. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about just to say this is the galaxy produce the right amount of stars and have an extended disk that doesn't have a central bulge uh, over cooling problem, essentially. So um, the first thing I look at it is, uh, is the CGM. How does it look like at the peak of the star formation, where it's around redshift 3? And this is snapshot around redshift 2.8 or so. Uh, a slice of the, uh, of the CGM, just a general picture of how it looks like, uh, the metallicity and the kinematics. Uh, so you can see here is the view radius indicated by, uh, by the white circle here. Uh, the accretion plane is um, viewed edge on. So we see the accretion plane here, and we see the bipolar, very nice bipolar outflows with higher metallicity that are coming out with also high velocity, um, with high metallicity, and also um, the accretion flows coming in uh, this way along the accretion plane. So uh, inflows and outflows are some sort of uh, not very uh, 
matter each other, so different in the perpendicular direction at this, at this, at this redshift. And we can see that the inflows are not completely pristine in the sense that you have actually accreting satellite dwarfs uh, venting lots of metals uh, to the accretion stream. And as well as some halo fountains, as you can indicate here, some of the gas are actually coming back and join the inflow again. So this is a general picture I want to, I want to show that um, this is how the CGM kinematics looks like. So to compare with observations, we of course need to uh, compute uh, the, the iron, fraction, iron fractions for each metal species, and we need the radiation background. So to, to compute that, we, we used um, the uh, uniform UV background. On top of it, there's a non-uniform uh, stellar radiation background from, uh, uh, from <coughs> using Starburst 99 and uh, assuming a certain star formation rate at that redshift. And what I want to show here is that when you're getting close to the galaxy, um, within the 50, 15 kiloparsec or so, uh, the stellar background here is more important, is even stronger than the UV background. So it, it's important to consider this uh, in terms of calculating the, um, the iron fractions. So here are some maps that uh, Mikhail has showed two of them already, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the metals and the hydrogens are chased by uh, in, in our simulation. So it's a similar, very same projection as you see before in the general picture, just different ions now. And we can see that, first of all, the oxygen-6 really track what it looks like in the metal bubble, as you've seen before. So it's very extended region, up to three VO radii, you have unity of covering fraction of oxygen-6, very strong oxygen-6. And the hydrogen, of course, it seems to be tracing mostly inflows. Uh, the high column of hydrogen is mostly accretion flow that penetrating deeply into, into the viral radius here. And of course also there are the low ions are mostly tracking inflow. So here I indicate uh, the fraction of inflow and outflows uh, in, in these in this ions. And to understand why, that we have most inflows in low ions and outflows in high ions, we can look at the halo fountain or we can look at the bio cycle, we can say, of metals at, uh, at the temperature uh, density plane. So this is temperature here, plot the density is vaguely uh, distributed to the ISM, you know, the dense region, the IGM, the cool IGM, the less dense region but, uh, but cold, and this is the circumduct medium, and this is about the halo gas. So what we see here is the metallicity uh, distribution of all gas in that simulation at that redshift. You can see is that this branch here is actually heated outflowing gas. The gas heated up there and in very enriched, and they join the halo gas and enrich the CGM here. And some of the CGM coming back, raining back and join the ISM, together with this branch of the IGM, also uh, accreting gas into the ISM. So you can see this, this whale fountain here. So now, the rest of the panels are showing the fraction of each ion um, as a, as a, uh, versus the total amount of elements here, uh, atom mass. So we can immediately see that the low ionization species here are the ones that's recycling back. It's either recycling back or some sort of enriched inflows coming in. So that's why they're mostly tracking inflows. And oxygen-6, of course, they're tracking this heated outflowing gas branch and also the CGM metals. So that's why oxygen-6 track, tracking most of, uh, of the outflows while the carbon-4 is sort of both both. So you can see the inflow branch here as well as the outflows. So um, if you draw a line of sight, uh, this is before is just the column density, now you can draw a line of sight of, uh, of, uh, of this one single galaxy and you look at different positions. Uh, this is one sample of a galaxy of, of a spectra and what you can tell here is the alignment of different components, including high components such as oxygen-6, as well as something like silicon-2, uh, there are multi-phase structure of CGM there. And also the, the red line here is another example. And of course, some cases, there are hot gas oxygen-6 without um, the corresponding component in low ion. So it's not always uh, correlated that way. So each of the line of sight I can compute an equivalent width, and I can draw the equivalent width as a function of impact parameter. And because the galaxy at that time is a little bit smaller than Lyman Brick galaxy, so I, I, um, we um, kind of uh, are scaled with a real radius. And, uh, and uh, the dot here is simulations, and uh, the cyan 
the light blue ones and the right dot here are the observations, mostly by Stadel et al. in 2010 for Lyman Brick galaxies. And we can see there's a consistency. Um, the simulations and observations actually consist pretty well to each other. Uh, of course, there has, seems to be quite drop off fast for, for the low ions, and this is something we still need to, to look into. Uh, on the other hand, um, simulations without much outflows, without drive large outflows, seem to have some difficulty to reproduce the, this relation for metal ions. Of course, for M and alpha, it doesn't seem to be a, a big problem. So, back to accretion flows. Uh, Michele has talked a lot about uh, Lyman limit system, so I don't think I need to introduce what Lyman limit system is. Uh, it is does tracking accretion flows. And the question I'm interested in is that how much of those uh, accretion flows is actually enriched? So if we track um, the covering fraction of Lyman limit system, it's about you know, 27 to 30%, which is consistent with what Lyman Bray Galaxy survey is doing. Um, but actually, one third of this inflow gas by mass is associated with certain dwarfs. And those dwarfs actually produce stars and produce metals. So how much they were enriched? Okay. And, and if you look at, um, if we look at the metallicity in detail, we find most of them are enriched by one hundredth of a solar metallicity. So they are not completely pristine. Of course, they are not also enriched as much as outflows. They are kind of slightly enriched. And if you look at this carbon two column density for the same absorbers, and you see there's quite a bit of um, absorbing uh, systems actually larger than 10 to the 14 or 10 to the 13 or so, so it's detectable by, uh, by observations. So this is the paper coming out earlier this year, uh, a, a blind survey of Lyman limit system, uh, what is the metallicity distribution of those systems um, uh, from uh, Lena et al. And you can see that clearly two branch, there's a metal pool branch and the metal rich branch. So in interpretation of in that paper is that the metal pool branch are tracking the accretion flows, and the metal rich branch are maybe the outflows, or maybe some recycled wind. And this makes me interested to look at our simulations, although it's a different redshift, and we see remarkably the two bimodal distribution of the Lyman limit system. And the blue line here showing the inflows, we can clearly see that inflows are mostly metal pool. Uh, however, the outflows, you can see half-half, half of inflow, half of outflow. They have partly maybe the recycled wind, okay? Or I mean, partly also maybe uh, the disk structure, the rotation disk structure right there. So um, it'd be important to look at the evolution of, uh, of the CGM. And this is preliminary results. We just started to look at it. And this is just plot the column density of total amount of column, total amount of metals from redshift 3 or so all the way to redshift 0.5. Uh, it's not very clearly to see in this picture, but when you scale with VR radius, it actually shows a very good self-similarity. So before redshift one, the whole extent of this metal bubble is actually around four VR radii. And it doesn't change. It's just some sort of grow with the VR radius. And below redshift one, it seems to start to grow. Uh, to grow a little bit, you know, to six or less than seven VR radii at redshift 0.5. And it'd be interesting to see how they to go to redshift zero but uh, this is also the case if you look at just one ion. I only look at oxygen-6 for now. And this is oxygen-6 profile uh, as a function of redshift. And you see this color difference. Uh, it's evolving like this way. So within one VO radius, as you can see, is that the oxygen-6 remained very strong. And it's consistent with the data, the Tomlinson data, about local star-forming galaxies. And this is how oxygen-6 halo would look like. So, I want to switch the topic a little bit because I don't have much time now. Um, the, the different environments we want to look at is a dwarf galaxy. And I don't want to talk too much about the properties of a dwarf galaxy um, because uh, Piero is going to talk about tomorrow. And uh, what we have is four luminous um, uh, small dwarfs and three dark dwarfs. And I'm going to focus on the two biggest luminous dwarfs where I contribute most of the, most of the star formation and most of the metal ejection. So the star formation rate, as you can see here, because of the shallow potential, each of star formation rate caused a strong feedback that quenches star formation so much that its star formation is so, so bursty. And this bursty uh, can also be seen by uh, accumulative mass loading factor. Basically, it's the mass gas ejected versus the stellar mass. And you can see that it's few tens. You know, it can reach up to 50. 
And this is very, very high compared to a disk galaxy, which mass loading is about 0.5 to 1 in Eris 2. So 90% of metals are ejected in the, in the, in the CGM at redshift 0 um, for these two big galaxies. So if you look at the evolution now, the picture of how this CGM metals looks like from redshift 3 to redshift 0, this is a co-moving space, OK? And this is 3 megaparsec scale. And we see that the V radii is in, in indicated here. So it evolves from 6 V radii at redshift 2 to 16 at redshift 0, which is 1.4 megaparsec of extent. And we can see the evolution of profile here, which basically is the same thing. So, there are a lot of metals out there, but metallicity is not that high. So in fact, if we compare with the Coast Wolf data, which is Jess Wolf, Jess Wolf here, she's not here today. Um, this is a hydrogen one, if we, uh, if nu nuclear, uh, sorry, uh, molecular, sorry, uh, neutral hydrogen, if you can consider here, uh, it's actually consistent with the data pretty well. But however, if you look at low ions such as ca carbon two, well, these are the sign ones are more data, and these are detection, OK? So it seems like our uh, data is kind of dropping a bit too fast compared to, compared to the observation. And of course, the sample of the cost dwarf survey has much higher mass. So the medium mass of these dwarfs is 10 times bigger than, than the, the biggest dwarf we have. So it's not really a fair comparison. It, if we just look at the, the, the right amount of stellar mass, and we see that like four this is very hard to see. Very four uh, upper limits, so there's no data to compare with. So we need more uh, massive system, uh, also maybe more data to compare at this point. This is preliminary. So I want to um, just summary. The take home point here is that the galaxy and CGMs are, uh, are fundamentally related, and all this, all the information that observer tells us about the CGM <laughs> is placed a very strong constraint of how we model galaxy formation and how galaxy feedback should work. And uh, we did a bunch of two, two system studies. Uh, we look at the metal enriched region at a high redshift massive galaxies. And uh, we find the equivalent width as a function of impact parameter is for five ions seems to be simultaneously consistent with observation, showing that our feedback is doing a good job. Uh, the bimodal metallicity of Lyman limit system is also reproduced, meaning that outflows are actually very important to produce that metal rich bridge. And galactic winds doesn't seem, well, the, the metal bubble doesn't seem to evolve that much for, for massive galaxies that have certain self similarity, uh, but for dwarf galaxies, it seems to expand into the IGM uh, very, very quickly. Uh, so, this, um, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, in the future, I want to simulate with more simulation going on and have including more individual galaxies to like look at, for example, uh, the quasar, uh, the neutral. Uh, hydrogen covering fraction for quasar host galaxies and also more dwarf ga intermediate galaxies, so higher dwarf, uh, higher mass dwarf galaxies, uh, and etc. Um, that's it. Thank you. Which one? The phase diagram. The phase diagram, yes. Oh, sorry. Yes? The threshold for, for this simulation is, is 20. So the star forming gas is actually uh, a bit off the picture now. It's, uh, it's around 6 or 7. It's, uh, it's around there. So because of the metal cooling, those star forming gas is actually cool, like to 1,000K or so. Yeah, I was uh -huh. worried that you have star forming gas, which is too hot. No, no, we, we're not, we, we kind of cut up here to just see, the, see this picture better, but the star forming gas are there. Without the stellar component. Yeah. You said non uniform stellar radiation. Oh, I see. Okay. So you're doing the radio transfer from the local star? It's not the, the uh, it's not the transfer, so we just impose uh, the one top one uh, non uniform background on top of the uniform background, use cloudy to what compute. Do you mean by non, -uniform? non uniform is a scale with one over R, so uh, oh. at the distance it actually decays. So, so is there the gas distribution or No, no, it's we assume that uh, escape fraction of three percent out of the ISM because the, the detailed structure of ISM we still don't resolve. So yeah, 3%. So to answer your question, um, the UV background does, does seem to change the column density. So it mostly in the center within 10 kiloparsec or so. 
uh, quantum density seems to change uh, quite a bit, but the equipment width is not because most of the most of the structure in the equipment width is uh, saturated, so it's dominated by kinematics. So the equipment width uh, distribution seems to remain the same. Say your multi phase space, you can estimate you know, the conduction uh, time scale uh -huh. and to see whether the connecting this uh, conduction is uh, reasonable or not. Have you tried to see that? Uh, no, that's a good point. I haven't tried to see that. Uh, you mean that that conduction? Conduction? Yeah, so conduction. single connection? You have, two, you have a multi phase, right? Well, you we, we do have a thermal um, diffusion. We have so that there are some more energy exchange between between gas particles. Oh, that 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 one. Yeah, but yeah. that is not electronic. Right. But yeah. Yeah. That's a plasma kind of thing. That's not there. But then, be since you, yeah, but since you know, you know, what kind of temperature, what kind of density structure you have, you can at least estimate what kind of time scale do I have. You mean it's very long, long given magnetic field or something. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, there, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. If it's very long, then forget about it. But if it's very short, then maybe change your result quite significantly. So that's it. Uh, last question? No, it's your mass loading factor for the door seems very, very high. It's mm -hmm. 10 to some very large factor. Is that, is that material enrich proportionally since it's such a large mass loading? It means it's very metal poor still, right. even after it's being Process, yeah, true? those are generally much metal poor compared yeah. to the disk galaxies. Yeah. But there are lots of them coming out, so that you know, with times actually enrich the surrounding quite a bit. Most yeah. of the metals are actually ejected. Most of the metals, 90% of the metals are ejected. Yeah. yeah. Yes, In mass. Yes, but the metals are only produced proportionally, only a small fraction of the gas that's been dumped down. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, so that, that keeps it still keeps the metals quite low. Yeah. Even yeah. Right. Therefore, right. In, in fact, if we just look at certain ions, you see the job is pretty fast. Yeah. But this, this is one system. So if we have multiple dwarfs, no, e if each dwarf galaxy is enriched a region like that, then there would be uh, quite a bit of a flow of the IGM mechanisms.